Damega Logai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh, Sid Kano, to the highest. And peace be to be the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by faith alone, in Christ alone. And great goodness and goodwill to them who love to walk in performing the great will of Lord God the Father which he has upon us according to his pro co and pro-horizon knowledge that we should be the well-seeming delight of his good pleasure on this earth and constantly performing that which he has designed for us in eternity past seeking and searching to realize if the anointed cherub Satan was flawless Tami'im till the Ola or the Elem or the things pertaining to its unrighteousness found in it. Though it were of a beauty, though it were of all the things, as Ezekiel 28.15 expounds for us. Yet our Lord our God says in Romans 16.20 at every breath, you shall make Satan to trample under your feet, Sun Tribo. The reason how it fell because of its pride, because thinking it could be like the Most High God, or in simple terms, following the things known as unrighteous standards. Even the same thing what today every believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ without recognizing that they have been transformed from the kingdom of darkness into kingdom of his light of dear beloved son who is an express image of the true invisible Lord of a God who is a living one forever. And calling us now from your position from where you have been fallen in Christ being redeemed, in Christ being sanctified, in Christ being reconciled, in Christ being our heirship, in Christ sharing his destiny, in Christ having his sanctification. We have been made to be there, greater than Tamim character what Satan has. What we were looking at today, the word Tami'im has several meanings. And that Tami'im character, which is nothing before a believer, if he would faithfully walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath, and if he would faithfully understand that he is having a far greater integrity through Christ than the chief fallen angel known as Satan and for that reason at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone your positional sanctification is so superior your character your ability is being made so great that in fact indeed Satan has nothing for you to say that you cannot reach the intended will of God the Father upon your life on this earth. The only thing that needs to be separated for us. Put to death your roles in nature. Necromatic. Colossians 3 verses 1 through 16. 
If you don't put to death your all sin nature and seek those things that are of the above, then you cannot be a slave to two masters. Our Lord our God says in 1 Corinthians 6.19 with a great price he has purchased us. Therefore we are no longer slaves to toss to and fro for everything that comes to our mind. By that I mean the things which he is going to insert. Says Lamentations 3.12 into your kidneys, the sons of Kuber, what we read yesterday. And every slight of doctrine that could come, we can call. The man on this earth, if he is not able to realize the right word of the Lord of our God in the church age to be taught with proper exegiomai, with proper isagogics and categories, with proper dispensing technique of dispensations, with proper exposition of the word, wherewith you can tell to understand word upon word, line upon line, and precept upon precept. If he doesn't look upon these standards, then certainly he goes to look the standards of sons of Kuwer. And this sons of Kuwer, if you could go back and look into the root word, it says, those who love to look upon the various means of revolution for their fate on this earth. And that is greater during the time in the past as well as in the present in my country, India. It is still far greater, which is nothing but looking upon astrology, numerology, which is so great an importance for them, even to consult the dead, looking upon the necromancy, Living the true Lord of a God, what Satan has blinded your eyes, not to look what you are in Christ. Not to look to put upon the new cloths of Antichrist, Hudekai, Hoseatis, Thessalatia. Though Satan went along upon the mountain of the holiness of the Lord of a God, yet Satan knows very well if you will know the truth, the truth will set you free. Therefore, causing you to go and forsake my Lord, Azal, to have in your mind a relaxation about my God, and training you up in all mannerisms to say that you can have this relaxation in your mind, you can have this relaxation in your things. Neglect to go for Bible doctrine. You can serve two masters, do this and do that, and go weekly once to the church, pay a huge tithe or pay a huge offering to the Lord and bribe Him, and He will make you to be all right with Him. All these things are the pastoral gimmicks. All these things have been headed by Satan. All these things, quoting in fact indeed the Psalms, where Satan also could quote Psalms, and it said to Lord of a God after his 40 days and 40 nights of fasting to teach you shall make this stone to bread but our Lord of a God said quoting the same thing in a right manner to say for our integrity to teach that we shall live not only by the bread alone that we take but by every word is the true survival for every believer and the people may quote what fear we have and Lord of a God is there with us that's absolutely great. We don't have any fear to fear. Apart from the fear that we are not able to perform the only unique will of God the Father in heaven, which is to rightly divide the word of the Lord of God and make every believer to be far greater disciple than what he intended in the, in the dispensation of his hypostatic union so that we, the believers now in the church age, could be the great Ariad, says Ezekiel 28, 7, and the same thing in Romans 16, 26, when we read through the prophets what he has revealed, he has revealed in the past dispensation, for example, in the present work of Ezekiel, what we are reading in 28 chapter, verse 7 and 8, that we will be the seed of his aliens one to unsheath our sword and to wound Satan in its teaching. And what are we wounding? Anything that goes against the high knowledge of the will of the Lord of a God on this earth. And what is that anything that goes against his will? For example, if you don't find the right revolution of the name of Yahweh, El Elyon, Elohim, which is nothing but to find the true life, which is nothing but by faith what we've overcome, which is nothing but knowing Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ is the eternal Lord of a God, which is our eternal life. If you don't come there in that realm of the name of his revolution, you will certainly find the things what we spoke about, like the astronomy, like the new 
numerology like the necromancy like the speaking to dead and all mannerisms where it could be a guide for you and that will be inserted for you if you ignore the right word of the lord of god to partake as them to the things pertaining to on this earth that the substitutionary to the word with those things and you will tell this is what we shall follow this is what the numerology says this is what the astrology says this is what your kundalini yoga says and what you do you believe lies and he inserts the sons of kuvar and if you neglect the right word of the Lord our God, if you neglect the right teaching of the Lord's mind in your pulpits, if you neglect that the word should reign in your thoughts more than anything else on this earth, then certainly you will become a trap for the sons of Kuwar. And never you will realize that you have been made superior than the chief fallen angel known as Satan in your positional sanctification with equal privilege and equal opportunity to glorify the Lord our God with the highest to be in his name and honoring his word above his name. Never you will wake up, never you will realize, never you will understand, never you will learn. The simple things which are so much essential for us just to hear and obey and follow him, no matter what it could cost, he will provide us the best. For example, every day coming to Bible class by carrying your cross, that's the simple thing for you to do it and do it. He provided for us Deuteronomy 8, 2 through 4 to teach. In the 40 years of wilderness, when they would come every day, no matter what it was, they should come every day apart from the seventh day, which was a rest for them. They would come, no matter how they were, their garments wouldn't have been torn out. By that we mean the flesh was not been rotten, neither the legs were been collapsed. They walked to the know, to, they walked to learn and to take the physical manna. Then how much more it should be today for us to gar to carry our cross every day and walk and take our spiritual manna that is yours, that is your birthright. Without that you cannot survive. That is your essential food on this earth, dear brethren. The great privilege for us to carry this manna every day because that is what you have to go and get. That is your life. And this is what the simple terms, what the Bible says, hear and obey Shamma. What you hear and obey that you guard and what you guard that you practice in your life and to imply that for your teachings to your children, for your teachings to your family, for your teachings to the welfare of the men who come in contact with you under the name called as brethren and that is called, we call as Adalfas. That is what very, very important it is. Because we share the same sperm of Christ among everyone who comes. Therefore, no racial discrimination. And as long as we have been here on this earth, we belong to one royal family of Lord God the Father. Therefore, Hebrews 3 says for us, encourage one another. Edify one another. Not as if you are having superior. The same thing what he writes in, in Galatians 6, 1 as well. The one among you who is superior in the things pertaining to spiritual standards let him restore the one who has fallen lest he also be tempted and he should be fall and the word what we call as brethren in the midst which we are going through every time in this church age people have falsely mistaken it and they haven't understood truly the sperm of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ which has been given for us carrying in us the same things which pertain to Bible doctrine to carry the same character of my Lord on this earth to teach the same character of the thinking of my Christ on this earth and yet there are many men who would love to say all the time we are having our denominations being made by man they would say, in our Pentecostal realm, they don't teach this doctrine. They would say, in our Baptist realm, they don't go for this. In our brethren realm, they don't go for this. But the Bible says for us, in Romans 15, 6, Homo thumadon, 
with one mind, with one accord, with one spirit, every believer should worship that great Lord of our God and the intent every believer no longer into the terms of racial discrimination, being baptized into one spirit. He demands every believer to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and carry the cross and follow my Christ. And Satan comes to divert your mind, inculcating in your mind to say, this word doesn't work. Inculcating in your mind to say, this thing doesn't work. So come, let's go and follow the witchcraft. The same thing what he says in Deuteronomy chapter 13, anyone among you, he wants to divert your mind from the word of the Lord our God, you make a thorough search of him first, and you should be the first one to throw stone, even though if she's your own wife, to carry you out from the heart of the Lord's mind. The same thing what Nehemiah prays for us in chapter number 9 and he says, Haven't you known the strange women the way how they took away the heart of Solomon, though like him in many of the nations was not a king? When you think the word of the Lord of God is not working upon you, you should either know the sin is still in you, the sin which should be separated from the holiness of the Lord of God, the way, the way of great example to prove the wisdom of Solomon, when he got one child, the two mothers were crying for that child or begging that claiming to be his own or their own, he ordered them to cut into part. And when you cut into part, to whom the kid will be alive? Can't you learn from that simple lesson that we cannot serve two masters on this earth? The other half of the principle, what we learn from there, the woman, the real one, being mother of the kid, says, no, let it be for him or let it be for her. Then Solomon recognizes that this is the true mother. Dear brethren, when you have been divided into two parts, can you serve? You will be dead. That's the principle what we learn from there. The same thing what it claims in the terms of Elijah. How long you want to halt between two opinions? If it is the true Lord of our God, Yahweh, El Elyon, Elohim, serve Him. And it is only the true Lord of our God. Therefore, he snuffed off 850 Baal prophets and he proves once again the integrity of my Christ, how powerful it is, those who want to stand loyal for him. It is an example for every believer today in this church age. Every believer ought to stand and it is binding upon them that they have to stand because we are here for Christ. Even a minute thought which could be there for you to sin against the Holy Spirit of the Lord of our God indwelling in you, either by thought, word or deed, by grieving and squelching and deceiving the right burden which has been laid down upon you. What is the deceiving? It is rather to be called as lie. It could be used as deceiving in the case of Ananias and Sapphira, what we read in Acts chapter 5. It says them the amount which was been given that was not the full full total of money which they should give back to the apostles' feet, though he did not demand them. They wanted to prove that this was the only money and that is what lying in the Holy Spirit of the Lord of our God is and deceiving it is. Likewise, dear brethren, today every believer has been entitled to slip the beer, that is what to write down first time kneeling in the presence of the Lord of our God the entire filth of the translation of the Bible and they have been entitled to write the second time by kneeling down in the interlinear so that they have been slipping out the lion and this is what the capability this is what the great caliber which has been given for every believer to get out from the filth of the translation to get out from the things pertaining to the the, the, the wrong translations which they go through so that they could come back and learn and look and see what exactly is there in the Hebrew Greek and Aramaic the third time when they're ready to slave Goliath like giants or giants like Goliath how greater it could be for them to understand and how true it could be for them to realize every believer has been given such a great caliber. Therefore, greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world. We haven't been given the spirit of fear of having the mind of fear, but we are given a mind of courage, mind of faith, mind of great strong words in the Bible doctrine to be inculcated into our soul. 
And if every believer doesn't slay a bear, if every believer doesn't slay a lion, if every believer doesn't go to slay every thought that comes against the knowledge of Bible doctrine and get that thought into captivity for Christ by opening up the Bible and reading them and doing a great method of study so that they could understand we are here being kept here not to deceive like Hananias and Sapphira and say, Lord, in your grace, you have given me less grace. I could only slay a lion. I could only slay a, a bear. But rather in return, it would be counted for you to look every thought that you take if it is not in accord with the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit you will be given a time to prove wherewith you should prove your grace by reaching to humble grace and to write down the Bible and to say to the Lord of a God I haven't deceived you O Lord every day you let go without writing the Bible you're deceiving the Lord like Ananias and Sapphira You say, this is the only portion I have to pay. If every pastor teacher doesn't go to expound Bible doctrine in the original languages of the scriptures, you are deceiving the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Because you have been called in comparison to Ezekiel 28, 15 to learn, to seek and to search if Satan could go in the midst of the stones of fire up and down, then how much more it should be for us from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 22, 21 to go through every word being the precious stone of the Lord's glory and say we have much more than enough in the Lord's will, which is our wealth, which is our life, which is our prosperity, which is our integrity, which is our truth, which is our eternal life. And we would say, Lord, we are running every day in the fire of your fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit to seek and search how Satan thought it could be greater but greater than that privilege you have given for us saying the things that have been revealed to this earth they are enough and the things that have revealed for us in that we walk through every day and see if there is an offensive way in us O Lord lead us in the way of everlasting truth so that when we stand in the presence we shall not be accounted as the Ananias and Sapphira who deceived the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit and for that cause, we beg for you to give you more grace. And he's going to provide for us richer grace than what you can imagine. For a humble believer, he's going to provide for us the great things which the world cannot understand till the work of the Lord of our God could be done in our lives though the people of this earth thought that they could be immortals but they cannot be immortals because we could be immortals since we have the work of Christ upon us being burdened out to slip the beer to slip the lion and not to deceive Lord God the Holy Spirit who is been indwelling in us to say what is the work that has been laid down upon you as John 17 4 when Christ our Lord God the Father says the work which I have given to me on this earth the Hebrew the Greek word gaze which meant to say the land or the earth which you have given for me on this earth I have fulfilled it I have put to its perfection not only just to perfection but to end it up in a complete perfection standards wherewith you could be well pleased that's Tatalastai and he goes to say tell Elias right now in the prayer what he prays for us in John 17 4 but on the cross, he says, Tetelestai, it is finished. Likewise, every believer on this earth has a pre-planned program. Therefore, they have been said in Romans 8, 26 through 28, or the similar terms in comparison to 28 through 32, you have been predestined, says the word, to conform to the image of his dear beloved son on this earth. You have been predestined to produce in you the character of Christ. You have been predestined to form in you the character of Christ, the Morphate. You have been predestined, says the word. What a great privilege it is for us to be predestined in the Lord's mind. In eternity past, he says, I have chosen you to be holy and blameless, like the way how Satan was being made to be holy, tamiim, perfection in its beauty, till the pride could come in it. And since you do not know what you are in the Lord, since you do not know what you are grieving and squelching and deceiving the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you have lost the right purpose of your life. You have lost the right direction of the life of the Lord's will for which he has been called for you to be in Christ. And you are seeking cheap substitutes. Remember, if you have been cut into two parts, whom you can serve because you will be dead. That's what the great wisdom of Solomon was being tested. 
Likewise, dear brethren, if you have been serving two people at the same time, whom you could love and whom you could hate. Can, can you serve two people? Can you divide your mind to this world? Can you divide your mind to the Lord? But you can first put, put the things first, things first by giving number one priority by taking up your cross and following the Lord of God and becoming disciples so that your entire life could be for a meaning and a purpose to influence your wife, to influence your children, to influence those who come around you so that you could be the light like a shining luminary in the midst of this powers and crooked nation generation, says Apostle Paul. But Christ our Lord of God uses far greater word. He says, adulterous and sinful nations. It demands that these generations are adulterous and sinful nations. But Paul writes, powers and crooked nations. In the midst of these people, you want to deny my Lord's word? And why we call this earth in those terms? Because Satan has film coated their minds not to look what is the truth. For that cause, it leads for you, apart from the revolution of Bible doctrine, it will inculcate into you the things pertaining to false teachings in your pulpits. It will inculcate in your mind not to learn sound Bible doctrine. It will replace for you to go back and find instant cure for your troubles like astrology, numerology, necromancy, witchcraft. And in fact, indeed, many believers now who became to become the so-called miraculous healing workers with their oil business, with their kerchief business. And they also want to prove when I prayed, this thing happened. When I prayed, that thing happened. And they want to do that among the believers. Even speaking in tongues was not for the believers. It was for unbelievers a sign. And never this Pentecostal crowds will change. We know that because they have been arrogant. Because they can't believe to live their belief, what they've already been believing. And they would say what they're doing is right. Let them open their Bible and read very accurately in the exegesis, what does the word say about tongues? Fulfilling the scripture, Apostle Paul quotes again in 1 Corinthians 14, what Isaiah spoke. And yet they don't believe because they don't love to believe what is true. They are so happy to believe what is lies in his entire life. What a shame it could be when we look upon the minds of this man just for the sake of some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley making their belly to be their God at the same time causing the people before this powers and crooked nation generations and the people who are of sinful and adulterous generations they want to say to deny the truth of the right infallible and inherent word and they want to say what they're doing is right and they would say what we are preaching is wrong we know that because it's a hard thing for them to carry every day the Lord's mind. Daily teaching one hour demands preparation. Faithful preparation, no matter whether it rain or shine, no matter whether there are people in your home till to the point of death, leaving them in the ICU unit and coming back and serving the Lord of a God. It demands the proof of our friendship to the Lord of our God, no matter what it is. First things first with the Lord of our God and number one priority with my Christ and taking to give number one priority that particular day, what revolution he wants to teach to us, accounting it and proclaiming to the world so that they could realize we are not here to impress you, but rather in return we are here to tell to you to walk by not deceiving Lord God, the Holy Spirit. When you grieve and squelch, you are certainly making up your life to deceive. For example, the fidelity what it has to be proven in your life you will prove it not the fidelity but infidelity saying that this is what it is oh lord i understood therefore i think so much i preach so much but lord our god doesn't want that he wants his thinking to be in you therefore in 1 john 5 1 we see if you agape him the word agape is not what that i desire to do it is what the desire of the lord our god in our lives is and we have to meet those standards and if you love him he says even in john 14 in 15 the standards of the word what he has given for us then do his commandments what are his commandments for the unbelievers 
through the believers what we are what we have to preach what we have to make our life to be the holy manner rock of life and tell to them to be believing in my Christ and to the believers who are already been there neglect not this great Bible doctrine which is your life Go and squeeze and ask your pastor teacher to teach every day, word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept from the original languages of the scriptures. The sheer arts of oratory, the sheer arts of explanation is not needed any longer in our pulpits. Because John 16 25 says for us, Thou is going to come when he shall talk with all boldness of the mystery doctrine. No longer in the terms of parables, no longer in the terms of proverbs. The hour is come for us to become the adult sons. And this has begun long back after the day of the Pentecost and it put to its perfection of its maturity in 1896 when the completed canon of scripture was been given and from there on we know very well the Bible which has been seriously attacked. Because Satan knows very well it wants to fill you with the sons of Cuba. When the Lord of our God knows when you are no longer interested to take Bible doctrine he will automatically make the sons of Cuba to come over you. That's what he says in Hosea chapter 4. Though your wives go and perform war dumb, they have separated from the Lord our God, they forsook him, therefore I will not punish them, but yet they will have a great fall. So it is in Lamentations 3 to 12, why they will be sent for you to the sons of Cuba? Because you haven't understood the great importance of Bible doctrine to be number one in your pulpits. And therefore, the sons of Kuwer, which will lead you in the filth of the translations, whatever they're talking to you, they will never have the time to go back and look what is the original Hebrew word for it, original Greek word for it, original Aramic word for it, and they will not inculcate and divide and dig and take it the word and study day and night and produce you the truth. Therefore, they are so much happy. And that's why the Christendom has been ending up in such a great apostasy, dear brethren. As we read Hosea 4, 6, it says, They have dissolved the only law of Adonai which he has given for the church age believers and, reply, and applying that principle to the church age believers which he gave them in the past dispensation to the prophets, to the priests. Their work was to nagat, their work was to teach. Even when we go to the Reformation epistles pertaining to Nehemiah and Ezra, Ezra the scribe, the ready priest, who was prepared his heart to teach the things pertaining to Bible doctrine to those men. And when he was been saying to them, this is a day of rejoicement, did not weep, yet they repented because they could not know what is the word of the Lord of God records Nehemiah 8 verses 9 and 10. And he concludes to say, the joy of the Lord of God is our strength. Is our Lord our God happy to fulfill His desire in our lives? That's why many are weak and sick until to the point of death, says the scripture. Lamentations 3, 1 through 12 gives a great warning for us, dear brethren. Though you may think your bones are not been broken, though you may think your face is not been faded out, though you may think you have still the vigor and valor in your flesh, remember Lord our God is going to slend, send to slip you those bears and lions. And why is going to send you? Because that filth of the translations which are which are going through is not the accurate one. They will lead you to hell. Therefore, you need to know and understand what is the original language of the scripture. Therefore, you need to put back in your foundations Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic in your pulpits. And if you still think, no, we can do better with the filth of the translations, then throw it out. Because the Lord of God is going to send the beer to slip you out. And many people are interested today to have a sermon that could please them, to have a sermon that could show them the prosperity gospel, to have a sermon that could lead them to have itching ears for their own ear to understand and not able to end your sound Bible doctrine. Over 4,000 and odd videos in the YouTube what we have put by the grace of the Lord of our God is not to impress others to say that we have so many bunch of messages to tell but it is a cry of the pain of our heart in the will of the Lord of our God to show for you once again put back in your foundations the original language of the scriptures as number one priority and expound the glory of the Lord of our God as long as your breath in your nostrils or whatever the time could be the rapture before it could happen before your death. Stay alert. 
and our Lord our God could come for the first watch, the second watch, the third watch, you should be found a servant being humble enough in doing his service. How? Faithfully according to his will. Not what you think you are doing is right. Not what you think you are doing is perfect. Not what you think you are doing is accurate. What according to his will is all about. That's what you have to do. It is what he demands in us, not what we think we can give to the Lord our God, demanding to say, Lord, this is better for us and we will come and give to you. No, not at all. That's how the sons of Kuwer will enter into your ministry. They teach to you lies. The Klaptes, the Lastes, the Misthotes, the Tupas, the Canapes, the Tiflos, the Shiros oriented minded pastors who love to teach to you with their entertaining clowns of standards. To teach to you jokes, to teach to you shirots of oracular methods or oratory methods, and teach to you some simple stories. And yet you do not know for what you have been kept alive. And if you can say, Lord, we are been truly seeking for such right doctrine, then kneel down in the presence of the Lord our God and ask for him, right, those right bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teachers whose duty is to lay down for you the inculcation of word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept, the original languages of the scriptures so that they could truly expound you and they could make you to understand your true calling in Christ and you could walk worthy of that calling. You cannot claim excuses at the judgment seat of Christ, dear brother, and take it granted. Lord our God has given for us enough. Therewith you will never understand, until and unless, if you wake up to the thirst of Bible doctrine. If you will never understand that your surviving on this earth is purely upon Bible doctrine. Never you will understand what it is until and unless you take in the word of the Lord of God has to be number one priority more than the physical breath what you take and as morning as you wake up kneeling down in his presence and reading Bible then reading anything else or taking your life to be number one priority all the time first making your time with the presence of the Lord of God and then coming back to realize what it is for which you have been kept alive on this earth. The things what we may preach to you every day seem to be a joke, a funny attitude. We don't mind for it, who are you to judge or as we could say. Because the spiritual man has been judged by no one. We are answerable to the great Lord of our God and not to you. If you would love to take it, you take it. If you would love to put once again back into the pulpit the original languages of the scriptures, word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept, and inculcate to make every believer for the special agnos of my labor, says Colossians 1, 24 through 29. Making you all to be in the presence of the Lord our God for his glory. Then do it. Show forth your mental agony of which Christ our Lord our God has left the sufferings for us. The renovation of the standards of the thinking of every believer so that they could be far greater than the apologist what you can think Ravi Zachariah is all about. Every believer has been kept over here to defend the doctrine of his mind what he has been taught by the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, the mind of Christ. And yet we find the sons of Kuwer in our midst. Therefore dear brethren, the Tamim character, which was for Satan, flawless. It had its integrity, it had its truth. It was of without blemish, it was complete, it was full, it was perfect, it was sincere, it was sound, it was without spot. In simple terms, it was undefiled, it was upright, it was walking wholly with the Lord of a God. When such kind of a great anointed cherub which our Lord of a God has made to be flawless, because of the thing it found in it, the unrighteous standards of iniquity or having to understand the perverse nature or dishonesty or wickedness or depravity. Till that time it could be found in it, it was working flawless. But we enter in Christ by having such nature of dishonesty or perverseness or wickedness or depravity to serve two masters. And till that many pastor teachers love to still serve two masters. Let's live about the believers. There is a complete sanctification in Christ. 
If not, you would have come to teach every day, word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept from the original language of the scriptures, the infallible and inerrant word of the Lord of a God. And for which cause you have been kept alive, you would say, I have come here to serve the Lord of a God and not to be served by you. Therefore, you would go to do his work faithfully, honestly. How many of the people are doing it? After believing in Christ, having the special bona fide gift of the pastor teacher to communicate this gospel, to communicate this word of the Lord of God doctrine, word upon word. And that what are you doing? Deceiving the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in you. Because you have all of your reasons to say you are right. You have all of your reasons to teach you are correct. And yet what you look, dear brethren, in the church age, though much is given for us and much is expected from us, though the time is so short, we do not know when is our death, neither we do not know when is our rapture. Yet what do we think in the presence of the Lord our God to enjoy our life by cheating others, by deceiving, in fact, indeed, the indwelling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in you. Remember the example of Ananias and Sapphira. They thought they could deceive by showing the portion of the money which they kept apart and they bought something else. For example, if you can take, if it was been sold for $100 million, they kept with them, for example, 20 or $30 million and they bought and so said, we have sold it for only $70 million. The remaining $30 million they kept. Likewise, dear brethren, our Lord our God wants 100% perfection of His work to be completed on this earth for which He has been caused and kept you alive on this earth. And for that He has said to be trampling Satan under your feet when you prove your greater character of Tamim than Satan what it had. And what does He say for us? For that cause He says, Before the foundation of the world I have chosen you to be holy and blameless. For that cause He tells for us, dear brethren, in this church age, a very, very unique and very, very great example. In Colossians 3, 7, our life was earlier like the Zoe, walking according to the prince of the course of the power of this air, like the children of the disobedience. But after believing in Christ, we are no longer there, but we should now look our true Zao life in Christ, the highest and the best life ever designed for us in Christ. And that's the unique spiritual life to reach from spiritual self-esteem to spiritual autonomy and coming to spiritual maturity. And these three standards which... Robert Bunker Thieme has explained in its exhaustive teaching of the Ephesians epistle, the sophisticated spiritual life causes us to understand if our every breath is not in Bible doctrine, never we can grow up. The people of this world may not love the teachings of Robert Bunker Thieme, so what, who cares? In fact, indeed, they did not love to take their own correction when Christ our Lord our God has taught them. A man with speaking like authority, a man who had that authority. Not like these Pharisees and scribes who were there to convince them. Likewise, your unique spiritual life, the true spiritual life is what it has been designed for you and for me in Christ. And how much a great work we have in the church age to do it carrying the work of the Lord of our God and making every believer to reach perfection, making every believer to reach in all knowledge, perfect and complete in the way which is designed for us in eternity past, says Colossians 1, 24-29, making them to stand in the presence of the Lord of our God without spot, without blame, and having to be unreproachable, irreproachable. Then the way how Tamim character of Satan should be trampled by our feet, says the word of the Lord of our God, that how much more upright we need to be. Then how much more upright we need to serve only the unique Lord of our God, not two men on this earth. How much more we should have the, inf the divine influence of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in our life through His Word, from the original language of the Scriptures, and transform us from the thoughts of this mind of this earth into the thoughts of the Divine One, which is far higher than this earth, and train us ourselves into the standards of His own pre council will, according to His great wisdom and lavishly spread prudence. How much more it is than what is Satan? Nothing. 
if that truth of its character, what it could be found in integrity of Tamiim, if that could be great, says the word of the Lord of God, then how much more great you should be in the lives of every believer. So that you are now ready to trample Satan under your feet. By that in return, you are ready to say to Satan that no matter how dishonest you were there, no matter however powerless you were there, no matter however wicked and depravity and you were unrighteous in the Lord's mind or in your character to prove that the, that's the pride of you, we, the church age believers, after believing in Christ, our Lord, our Savior, we will prove our honesty, we will prove our integrity, we will prove our righteousness, and we will walk every breath in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by not grieving and squelching and lying or deceiving to Lord God the Holy Spirit therefore yet though we grieve and squelch and lie at the moment of which we do either by thought word or deed we have the privacy of our priesthood wherewith we shall confess our sins and in the heaven we have at the right hand of Lord God the Father have our, has, having our advocate our propitiation wherewith he would claim the case and he would say to God the Father that this has been paid already and now he is going to discipline us so that we shall not repeat the same thing the same thing what he says while he was journeying on this earth of pilgrimage trip for his work being sent. According to your faith, let it be done to you. And what does he say? Sin no more. Go and sin no more. Every time we use 1 John 1 9, not a license to sin, it is a license to serve back our Lord our God, and we should be ashamed if you are still surviving in sin. How many times you would love to fall to sin? How many times your faith is not so strong enough to stand by the word of the Lord of our God and do His work? We are not talking about your physical, moral activities. We are talking about your failure to come every day to Bible class. Today is gone, it is gone. A failure for the pastor teacher not to inculcate in the pulpits day by day the original language of the scriptures with Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. Exegeting, isolating, categorizing with the right dispensing technique of dispensations. A failure of it. And what a great shame it is that the men love to go and say, Lord, I made a commitment, I made a resolution that I will not drink from this year, I will not do this from this year and from that year. And that when the new year comes again, you say, Lord, I forgive me, I have done such and such things. Do you know what it is? You haven't even drunk the sincere milk of the word of the Lord of our God, says 1 Peter 2, 1 and 2, so that you could be pure from all mannerism of uncleanliness, of the filthiness of your thoughts. This man won't change. They love to be divided into two parts. They are neither fit for the master's use, neither they are fit for the tongue hill. It will lose its savor for what it is. It shall be thrown out. It will be like the lukewarm believers to the Laodicean church. It will spew out. Therefore, he says, many are called, but few are chosen. But he has given opportunity for everyone to overcome and carry his cross every day. And those who overcome, to him I will give the power to become the sons of God. To them he gave the power to become the pillars of the temple of the Lord our God which is going to come. And he said, I shall make you to sit in my throne. Where Satan wanted always to look upon that throne. Do you know what a great privilege we have in the church age? And yet... Many men don't love what is that privilege in the church age. What a shame it will be when we stand in his presence. And how many believers are departing from this earth not having to look upon the influence of their life. So that the conduct by which Matthew 10.42 teaches for us. If you give in my name a cup of cold water. Go back and exit in the Greek you will find totally reverse. If you don't give to this little one according to the conduct of your life to influence upon them by teaching the right word of the Lord of our God, then certainly you will not have any reward. Far less you can think anyone who gives a small drop of water for you to drink in the name of the Lord of our God, they will be rewarded. No, not at all. The word is so strange when you read. 
It teaches for us very specifically according to the conduct and the lifestyle of you where you should influence upon others to have their own life in the spiritual realm of Bible doctrine. And if you don't do that, then certainly you will not be given any reward. Verily, verily, he says again over there. For truth, for truth, where it is, where it is. So what is your conduct, number one? Why did Lord of God call Moses alone to say, a man who we has not risen like him, the man whom we knew face to face? What was his conduct? What was his influence? Do you think over six lakh people who have been there in the crowd, they could follow not Moses? Because Moses was totally separated for the Lord's will. When he has seen the stick in his hand becoming a snake and again becoming back to st stick and the left hand which has been with leprosy and the man again when he removed his hand in his bosom saw clearing of the leprosy, he will certainly fear the Lord of a God to not to play gimmicks with this true Lord of a God. But many people don't see that fear. Remember if a man had a leprosy, it was a spiritual leprosy included today in our pulpits. What a great sin it would have been in the past. Therefore, while he was being cleansed, he says, go and do according to the law of the Moses what I have given to you. And be cleansed from the leprosy. And out of that leprosy, only one came back, the nine left off, though they were being cleansed. So the point what I want to tell dear brethren, a man being separated unto the Lord our God knew what is the fear when he was been there in the sicknesses of such leprosy. The same thing today what we find in our pulpits. The pastor teachers are not able to worry and to look that they are having spiritual sicknesses in their minds, in their thoughts and in their will which is not according to the Lord's glory, which is not according to the Lord, Lord God the Father's will, which is to train every believer and make them perfect and complete according to the thorough knowledge of Bible doctrine. And since they think now they have advanced medicine to cure that leprosy, they are allowed to covering it. For example, making their white hairs, though it has been grown up to be white, they want to make it black. They do not understand. It is Lord of our God who is going to convert from black to white for His glory. It's a sign of victory. And the way how they cover from black to white again, or from white to black. So they love to cover the hands of leprosy as well the hearts of leprosy as well to show see how great our lord our god has raised us though his wife has been elapsed and doesn't he say in jeremiah 8 10 through 12 if you don't honor lord's mind lord's word and teach it accurately your wives will be sent to other men they're not fear about that they want to cover it with leprosy but moses knew what was that leprosy which was been cured when he removed his hand therefore he trembled and therefore, Lord of God calls, he is faithful in all of my home, and he calls to give him a great honor and saying to him, I knew him face to face. Why can't the church church believers over millions of people who have believed in my Christ now to equivalent to that one third fallen angels? And when the number is finished, our Lord of God will rapture the church. And how many believers who have been there yet? And why our Lord of God doesn't call you like the way how he has taken Elijah home, the way how he has taken Enoch home, and they will be coming back again. Can't you die at death of there where our Lord of God could transform you from this earth and take you alive back home? Can't he say that we have a testimony, that we have witnessed our Lord of God, we have been pleased our Lord of God, as the Hebrew love and chapter teaches for us a great hall of fame? Can't he have a special attention upon you? Can't he be coming to dwell in you as the word says in John 17 and John 14? We are perfect only when God the Father and God the Son, when Lord God the Holy Spirit will cleanse the garbage that is there in our soul and they could come and abide in us so that we can become perfect. For that cause he wants to sanctify us by what? Through his word. Nothing else than that. No matter how great you may think you may be a great following man in the world so that many people honor you, many people think of you, many people will look upon the fame of you and if you're not honoring the Lord's mind and the Lord's word, you're nothing. You're nothing to the Lord our God. You may be everything to this world. It demands in you to realize 
to be free from the sin. Therefore, he has given for us 1 John 1 9, not a license to sin, but to serve back that great Lord of our God with fear and trembling so that we should be free from the sin. What is that sin? Number one, don't talk about your silly things called as your adultery or drunkenness or XYZ. Those even the unbelievers practice. The number one sin what a believer is practicing is to ignore, to carry his cross every day and follow my Christ. The number one sin for the pastor teacher to ignore, to put once again the foundation of the scriptures in the original languages in your pulpits and teach word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept. That is a sin for you. Doesn't Psalms 1 teach for us? Meditating upon the word of the Lord of God day and night. Are you doing it? Then can't it be accounted for you as a sin? Doesn't the word say if you are being a teacher in the law and if you practice not even the minute thing and if you teach, then you are a sinner. What does the word say for us in return to realize and to understand? Practice and teach what the word of the Lord of our God is. And since many men don't understand about the revolution, what we talk every day, to prove your character to be far greater than the Thamim of nature, of Satan's nature. Many men love to inculcate themselves by disobeying Lord's word. And yet they are ready to face the Lamentations chapter 3. No matter however sickness they could come in their life, they would say it is Lord's will. But never they will understand the sin which has been kept in them to be erased out. Doesn't he say while he was selling to the Pharaoh through Moses? We walk three days in the wilderness. Then we're going to give our sacrifice to the Lord of our God. Why this three days of walk? Can't it be given in the luxurious pleasure in the Egypt itself? You should learn what is that when we have been called to look and realize. Without that suffering, never you can understand the power of the Lord of our God. So while you confess your sins like Job, that he says, Though my Lord God slays me, yet I will trust in him because he has given, he has taken. Then to the name of the Lord of God be praised. How many people will qualify in that section for glorying the Lord of God as believers? Or yet how many people will perish according to their own sins? Dear brethren, suffering for blessing is a great blessing for us. He is inculcating in us those three days walk of character. Those three days could be realized again the way how Apostle Paul says in Acts chapter 20 verses 24 through 32 Three years day and night I taught them the word of the Lord of our God Signifying them to understand he has declared them the complete counsel of the Lord of our God Therefore he is free pure from their blood which could be upon their own head those three years regularly coming and understanding Bible doctrine, learning Bible doctrine, how much of an effort it would be for those people who would come to realize that we should be disciples to the Lord's mind. While in the walk of the wilderness they would realize and understand and come to the point of understanding. The place where he has chosen for us, the place what he has called for us to go and give a sacrifice to the Lord of our God, the days of three days of walking, the people would easily come to know. In that wilderness, what a great work it will be. Living behind the world, seeking and searching to walk in the narrow gate, the straight gate. That's what in simple terms what we could tell when Christ our Lord of God expounded the parable. Blessed are the people who walk in the narrow gate, the straight gate. And the Greek word agnazomai which demands for us the special labor. The special labor of his walk. And that's what Apostle Paul says, the special labor for me is to make every believer perfect and complete. And walking in that narrow gate, the straight path. In that wilderness, when they would walk three days, they would realize that they have left behind the world. They have left behind the luxury. They have left behind what it could be hindrance for them to serve the true living Lord of a God. But yet today in our church age, People are no longer interested to leave behind their own possessions. Let's not talk about the unbelievers. Let's talk about our own Christendom first. How much we are today for the Lord of our God so that the joy of the Lord of our God could be our strength. 
Have you ever read at least once kneeling down in the presence of the Lord of God, the complete Bible? Far less you could be there prepared for the next mission. To kneel down and write the Bible by way, the way what we could call to slive off the beer. After writing in the filth of the translations and getting out whichever language you use, the third time you the second time you love to write the things pertaining kneeling down in his presence in the interlinear of Hebrew Greek and Aramaic, so that every word when our Lord our God would communicate for us, being given for us the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher and his authority of a spiritual gift, we would come every day to expound what we read every day and come and teach. And though they may not be hearers for us, I need not worry, because the Lord our God knows for whom these messages have been recorded and kept, it goes to them. Therefore I record and put in the YouTube. Because I don't have enough money to put in the satellite channels. Neither I claim anyone to provide for me. But Lord God knows it is a grace provision. It will be a grace provision for all. There is no need to beg anyone. He said it has been prepared. You go to Elijah. The same principle we follow and walk by faith. Even the Bible, what you are writing to publish it, we know very well how Lord our God will prepare for us. The things needed for his work to honor his word above his name on this earth. He knows very well those righteous men who will give for his work. We did not go and beg anyone. Wasting our time rather than concentrating upon our job. For which he has kept us alive, enjoying his grace. And at the end we could say like Christ our Lord our God who said in John 17.4. The work which I have given to me on this earth, O oh Lord, I have finished it. Every believer has a work to witness the truth for which cause he has been born in Christ. So sliving the lion, sliving the beer. And in day-to-day -day life, when you get Goliath-like chains in your life, you slave them out by the word of the Lord our God. You realize to understand the sons of Kuwar who would come according to their astrology, who would come according to the numerology, who would come according to the necromancy attitude. What do you say? You just trample them under your feet because Satan has been inculcated rather than the Tamim character of Christ. It was there in it. It fell to the unrighteous standards, dishonesty standards, depravity standards. And therefore, what you do? You just say, now the Satan standards are this like sons of Kuwar therefore fearing Lord of our God giving him back that which is glory to him we would say to God the Father Father lead us in thy truth and see if there is an offensive way in us even the minute sin you could found in us like the way how Moses was you could found in us like the way how David was you could find in us the way how Jeremiah was Isaiah was you could find in us the way how Paul was and mould us up because you have given for us everything and there is nothing lacking in us so that we could claim our excuses to say Lord you haven't provided this so that we, if you would have provided this we would have been far greater than this man no he has given everything let the redeemed of the Jehovah say so says Psalms 107 if you are redeemed of the Lord of our God you know very well not to sin either in your thought word or deed the minute thought Anything that goes against the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Therefore, what you do, always you be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by using rebound, 1 John 1 9. Judging yourself, 1 Corinthians 11, so that you shall not be judged. Your conscience knows very well what you think. You and Lord of God alone knows very well what you are. As your heart knows what you are. So the Spirit of the Lord of God searches your heart to know what you will be in Christ so that you are walking to carry this cross every day faithfully in the Lord's glory. You will perform for which cause he has kept you alive on this earth. Ultimately our work is to trample Satan under our feet. Every breath says Romans 16, 20. And what it is to prove that we are far greater than the Tamim character of, Christ, of Satan which was been given to it. And though we have been taken from the depravity standards of sin by inculcating in us the old sin nature of Adam's original sin to us at the time of our physical birth, being born again, yet we have that old sin nature in us, yet we are here to prove to Satan to say, though we have this old sin nature in us, putting it to death, walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we will prove that we are greater than the Tamim character what you had before your fall in Christ. And that's why this great Bible has been given for us. That's why the word of the Lord of God is the lamp to your feet. 
That's why you have been made to clothe with the new clothes of Antichrist, Suneka, Hosiatis, Tesalatia. That's why I have been constantly demanded to be filled with the Spirit. That's why I have been given to walk in the Spirit. If you live in the Spirit and the walk is peripata, oh, for the first time, the live is not the bios life, but the zoe life, the highest and the best blessed life given for only a believers in Christ. And that's why I've been told, if you ever live in the Spirit, that's what you have to march in the Spirit. Again, once again, the Zoe life, but not now peripata or to walk, but march. Peripata or in wisdom among them who are not, but, but the word called as Sto Icon, it is for the apocalyptic revolution of the Lord's mind what we have to teach every day. That is marching in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And be aware, dear brethren, until and unless you take your chance like the way how Moses took. The man who said why the, fire, why the bush has not been consumed by the fire. And until and unless if he could, didn't take that decision, he wouldn't have been called. Says Exodus 3. Like as every believer should take up his decision to live a life of truth. How many days more do you want to live a life of lie and filth on this earth? How many days more do you think you can serve two masters? How many days more you are the property of Christ and you are living like the property of this cosmos diabolicus? Make up a firm decision not to grave, not to squelch, and not to deceive the true plan of Christ which has been given to you. And if you till, still think you can get along with all of these things, remember, dear brethren, we have the judgment seat of Christ to be faced. That judgment seat of Christ where the Lord of God is not a respecter of persons. What you sow that you will reap. It's better the sooner when you wake up to realize the time is short. You should realize to be aware more than Satan when it knows very well Revelation 12 it says for us. Since the time is short in the tribulation it will work. But right now it's working upon the believers who are becoming the sons of apathias or the sons of disobedience and not growing up in grace under the knowledge of Bible doctrine and yet inculcating in their minds not to know the truth but giving to them the sons of pure attitude like astrology, numerology, like the things pertaining to necromancy and everything, whatever cults you can go along and follow. To think that this will be a divine revolution and some of the people believe the third eye of such and such God will be opened up, then all the people will be destroyed. All these sheer ruts of theology, the sheer ruts of myths, the sheer ruts of their thinking. Who cares? We have the divine revolution of the word of the Lord of our God. His name itself is a revolution for us. But the pastors have turned out into gimmicks. Following the practices of the first century, still thinking that such and such miracles, such and such healing, such and such tongues. And not able to come out and look into the mystery doctrine of the church age of Ephesians, Philippians and Colossians. Your life has been hid there in Christ go back and expound the Lord's mind go back and expound the Lord's truth go back and understand the Lord's glory when you will do that thinking your whole life is enough to go and sing songs in each and every country and you will be saved and you have done a great achievement the great achievement will be for you when you read the Bible, when you go up and inculcate that Bible in the standards of your thinking and you could become to defend the gospel of the Lord of God by becoming a great ambassador at the same time needed for you to become a greatest apologist every time. Whenever you go through and learn Bible doctrine so that in your debates you could stand and you could say, there is nothing like this infallible and ignorant word of the Lord of our God. Though Sheikh Hamad Didat could challenge to say he has kept his neck under that gibbet so that when anyone could prove within 10 minutes that Jesus Christ said in the scripture that I am the Lord of our God or I am Messiah, then certainly I would be cut off my neck and I have kept my neck under the gibbet so that the axe could be kept for 10 minutes. And the opposite person who went for the debate who couldn't prove, he says, now I'm free, I'm free from my neck. And he wants to say, a life-taking challenge also I have been given by being an unbeliever to the believers so that they couldn't prove that Christ said in himself in the Bible that I am he. And yet, there are men who claim to say, 
that they are great apologists. Every believer should be turned up to become a greater apologist than ever lived. In fact, indeed, we are not talking about Ravi Zacharias. We are talking about the man in the Bible called as Apollos. Then Aquila Priscilla could come and train them up in the mannerism of the word of the Lord of God and train them up to prove this is Christ, this is Messiah. The human standards, we are not able to talk on this earth. Why are we to compare with others? But every believer has been given this great privilege and opportunity to be greater than those men in the Bible ever given for us because we have now in one hand the completed canon scripture, the 66 books enlightening it everywhere you go, how important it is to understand the great power nature of the terrible God of our Lord who he is having all the everlasting strength to cause to make the dead to be alive and he is the one who has given for us those who are fools the testimony of the word of the Lord our God will give them that they are wise in Christ. Psalms 19, 7 through 8. And he is the one who is going to make the fools to be wise because the foolishness of the Lord our God is far greater wisdom than this world. And what is that foolishness we preach to you? Believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Unbelievers will say without our works we cannot be saved. But the Bible says the only righteous work which has been given for us in Christ that alone can save. And you may say, what is the Bible? Heaven and the earth will pass away, but the every word which our Lord our God has spoken will stand forever. Your good deeds, the Bible calls them as ministers cloth in Isaiah 64, 6. Your good deeds will not stand, says Revelation 20, 11 through 15, where you could think you could claim your good deeds. The book of works will be opened. Since you don't meet the righteousness of the Lord our God, you will be put to the lake of fire forever. Think over these issues. And the Bible says, it stands written, it stands written forever. Who are we to alter his word? And yet you may think you could be saved by the standards of your own thinking. And then love to think you have a film court upon your eyes not to believe this truth. Dear brethren, the Tamim character of Satan, what it was before its fall, is nothing before the privilege what we have today in the church age, being indwelled by the Trinity. The beautification of stones and gold and the clothes what Satan had is nothing before the things which our Lord of God has given for us everywhere to be the stone of his mind and the decoration through his clothes with the pure righteousness of the benignity of truth in the terms of his holiness. And that's why we lack to prove our honesty, to prove our integrity, to prove our truth. Greater than Job. And we know what was happening in the heaven. Job doesn't know what was happening down. But yet at the end he came to prove what it was. But we know very well what is happening in the heaven on, on behalf of you and me. Or is there anything else that is happening on behalf of you and me so that our Lord our God could find joy on this earth? The same thing what he says, when Christ our Lord our God could come, can he find faith in this people? Can we walk according to his mind? Can we walk according to his truth? Can we reign according to his will? Therefore, dear brethren, Psalms 23.3 gives for us that though he goes through the valley of the shadow of death, there is nothing that can hinder him. And he further writes in verse number 3, for a very, very great lesson, dear brethren, the soul of him which has been breathed or which has been kept alive, that's what every believer's soul to understand. If this believer's soul, if it has not been restored by taking a U-turn, the U-turn of the failure of Lamentations 2.14, wherewith Lord of our God has given gifts according to the distribution leading captivity captive, Ephesians 4. If this U-turn has not been restored, and if that guidelines has not been given for us by the word of the Lord of our God and by the warning what we give every day, in rounds of righteousness, that is what in the paths of his Sith can know, that great Lord of our God who is having that unswavering adherence to do the same thing every day, and that righteousness and peace, the character of his righteousness on rounds of his righteousness, which is going to inculcate in us on an account or the purpose for his great name of honor, authority and character. 
is inculcating to stand and to give for you every day so that your soul could be converted once again and restored according to the guiding lines of the Lord of God every day every day for you to understand the restoring process and in the rounds of righteousness on the account of his great name he is willing to give you your meal before your enemy and that meal is to take bible doctrine every day and come and learn and this great inculcation of the word of the lord of our god to prove that you are far greater in character than the tamim nature of satan before its fall and don't waste your time he is waiting every day for you to guide. The only thing that is an hindrance between you and Christ, if you are a believer, your sins, use rebound and sin not. We do sin, we know that, but yet use rebound and try to control the things pertaining to the sin and yet remove from there when the word of the Lord of God is so powerful by the faith of his word, it can overcome the cosmos thinking. But it, but it requires time to be grown up from milk to bread from bread to meat happy are they who could be like Paul who could turn back and who could wait upon the Lord of God and say for three days and three nights did not drink or eat the food because he wanted to get back his eyes and he wanted to serve the great Lord such sort of repentance is needed for us but we know people will not have such sort of a repentance because whenever they come to Christ they want to come for a baptism to take in the terms of the marriage the baptism to take that they're going for foreign countries the baptism baptism to take in the Roman Catholicism to prove for the children to have some good education <laughs> but not to serve my Lord don't worry whatever you do Lord of God has a record of it and not fearing him and paying him back for the glory for which he has kept you alive on this earth will certainly cause you to realize at the judgment seat of Christ just for the things of this earth, even Alexander the great king said, there is nothing I could take from this world, though he has conquered the world. So you will find a judgment seat of Christ just for the silly stupid things of this earth. I forsook Bible doctrine. I forsook to go to the realms of the righteousness of the Lord of a God and the purpose of his great name of honor, authority and character. Just for these things, I have lost, and many people lose suicide. Just for the love of the failure, they lose the love of my Christ. And we being ready by the time, we should be the noon light, says Zephaniah 2 4. The double light, the first light being Christ, the second light, we through Christ, or Christ through us, shining in this world. And how many people are perishing? You're accountable in your area without knowing my Christ. The calling is so easy. Believing in Christ, getting eternal life is so easy. But walking according to his conditions after we believe in the Lord demands for you to put to death your old sin nature, your backsliding nature, and live in Christ. That's why the word says, after believing in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you are buried in him. And if ever you come the next day to be alive in the Christ, you have to be only risen in the Christ. If not, you are not risen, neither you are alive. And for that cause to walk, Milkman cannot handle, bread man cannot handle, only the meat man can handle. Therefore, the three years of time walking in the wilderness of three days is the word you should be prepared to be learning every word. And that's the bona fide duty of the pastor teacher if needed more than two hours in a day to teach. Because disciples is what we have to make. Not just nominal or professed Christians what the world thinks they're happy when they have so many people following them and coming to church weekly ones. And they have all the reasons to say, we have this method, we have that method, therefore we cannot come. So what? Who cares? Take upon the things pertaining wherever you go in your smartphones, download the things that are needed for you and be listening, listening, listening every day, every day. The tithe of your time you have to pay to the Lord of a God. That time belongs to Christ and it is not of your own. And why you can think it is of your own and Based your gracious purpose on this earth and how woe it will be upon them those being pastor teachers who are not able to inculcate the Lord's mind every day from the original language of the scriptures to be the foundation in our pulpits yet replace them with the share of the theology share of the oratory share of the thinking and call it his Lord's will Dear brethren, think over these issues. Life is too short. 
prove your character which is far greater in purpose of equal privilege and equal opportunity with the prayer of Paltimo privileges ever given to you in this church age that Satan's time in nature before its fall is nothing because Christ our Lord our God has qualified to be indwelled by the Trinity then he needs in us complete sanctification and complete holiness as the word says we have the sperm of Christ 1 John 3 9 we have to be holy so he is holy and if there is anything that has been in our mind not to realize that we have to be holy as is holy then certainly the working of the sons of Kuwer in your mind is still greater and Satan never wants to love you to look into the word of the Lord of God and Satan wants to inculcate always in your mind which is not at all greater than the word of the Lord of God the lust of flesh the lust of eye and the pride of life do you love the world or the world should be left behind for the work of the Lord to go into the wilderness and serve him. Think over these issues. Today being one more Sunday of the September 1st and many churches will come to learn and many people will gather in their own knowledge to tell that's the church but they will never understand you have been bought with a great prize. You have to glorify the Lord our God in your flesh. And you are the church. A church of Lord's delight. A church where it demands if our Lord our God is joyful in you, you will be having that strength to realize his valor and vigor. And if there is still sin in you, and if you are not walking according to his will, then remember, dear brethren, there is nothing that could be so great a joy for us on this earth to think we are acting it will be like a hypocritical manners because Lord of a God is not happy only the joy of the Lord of a God will be our strength and that will be for a great power think over these issues come and carry across every day the pastor teachers come and teach the word of the Lord of a God every day so which way you want to go dear brother and you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow with our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order to telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour, that is the moment itself, you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us for very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire the possession of the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest matter is to care the Sathan Lagam. Herald the word in season and out of season because of the diamond from my witnesses where you have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in the well Trinity, followed by Babylon in our hands, and number two diamond from my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord of our God, no matter how ever the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide as we shall come back and continue. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great privilege you have given for us and the strength which you have given for us to glorify thee and to learn and to look, O oh Lord, the power which you have given to us in the church age can certainly make us to be worshipping you in spirit and in truth by wearing the new clothes to be far greater than the Tamiyam character of Satan, what it was before its fall. Therefore, dear Lord, the word which you have given for us, we are so thankful for it. Thy completed canon, so thankful for it. Thy indwelling ministry of Lord God, the Trinity, and are so thankful for it. For each and every player of political privilege which you have given for us, which we don't deserve or not work, it you have bestowed upon us to walk in thy truth and to wake up for thy calling and to challenge for which you have been kept alive to prove that it is our Lord God alone that reigns forever and forever. And with him we also shall reign forever and forever. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father, help us to inculcate these standards in the mind of every believer because they are belonging to thy flock. What are we, O Lord, whom we can do? Because, O Lord, until and unless you give us that thought, until and unless you give us that vigor and valor and energy, we cannot come up. 
so father see if there is an offense within us oh lord they think that you hate which is in us father kill it off so that lord we could come back and be for you for the warrior having a very good sound health of the spiritual one as well as the physical one having to be constantly ready to use our weapons and having to make for us all the time to be in communication with thee in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit and reach for which cause has been kept us alive on this earth to glorify thee to the maximum and in nothing to withhold back because father it is thy will that we have been kept alive in your eternal plan for thy glory help us to do as Christ our Lord our God said I have finished the work on this earth so as such when we could come back home to say father we have finished the work for which we have been kept us alive on this earth for that reason father we pray that we will be immortal till the work of my Christ our Lord our God has been done in our lives for thy glory and see if there is an offense within us O Lord lead us in the way of everlasting truth in Christ my soul's prayer was gracious name we pray father may Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten us in these times